जी नमस्ते सुनील जी सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम सो वी बीन डूइंग लेक्चर टू ऑफ यू एच बी थ्री एंड वी इनफैक्ट कंप्लीटेड लेक्चर टू एंड वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट योर शेयरिंग रिगार्डिंग वट वी कुड रिफ्लेक्ट ऑन फ्रॉम you h v 2 so far so the question was or the points for reflection were that since you h v 2 what effort are we making to self explore on a regular basis and what is the result of it what is the outcome meaning what is the result of doing this effort for self exploration and if you can share three specific things that you feel have changed for the better in you three particular things which you consider as achievements in yourself as a result of this so you are sharing on that and any 10 key take takeaways from uhb2 but that's okay because If several of us can share, then maybe two, three takeaways each one of us can think about, and I'm sure that is uh, quite easy to do. So you can put forward your sharings. Now is it okay? Ah, uh, better. Okay. Namaste. Uh, good morning, all. Uh... so uh, first i start i have started this journey of uh3 one from around uh, september or so i did it, i did the uh3 two online mode and uh, basically when i started this uh, i thought it is a certified course i should do it okay uh, because uh, it was a compulsory from our organization also so in that way i entered into this and uh, when i uh, was about to uh, start and going through all five days of the fpt when i started this journey uh, during the uh3 one uh, only preliminary views i was able to get it so i started okay uh, this is how it goes about about harmony first we have to analyze on our self and then uh, see to with the others also then after a while after uh, that is during february i did my uhv2 but uh, after uhv2 i was able to explore self explore myself still more in a better way because mm-hmm. it was uh, deeper the second fdp was much more deeper into the thoughts um, mm-hmm. and therefore uh, uh, after uhv1 and after uhv2 uh, i have analyzed my own self and uh, i was uh, uh, better in the understanding right understanding first uh, on my own self as well as uh, with the others because in the work nature uh, since i used to start early in the morning from my home by 7 o'clock and uh, when i reach over there with lot of pressure i enter into the campus and from the campus when i enter into the home evening late evening by 7 o'clock also with lot of pressure i used to enter uh, so during the work progress all after uhv2 i have tuned myself and um, how to cope up with the stress at work etc and uh, um, uh, with my own colleagues uh, the competeness to work with them and uh, uh, yeah everyone are getting excelled why can't me like that i had a thought in my on my own but mm-hmm. after uh, attending all these programs uh, when i was analyzing my own self each one has their own uh, excellence they will each one has one particular uh, uh, mode of excelling themselves in a particular nature so let them uh, go on their uh, track let me move on my own track and therefore the uh, self reflection was uh, i was not much worried about the others okay in what way they are moving i was just concentrating on myself and my own works so uh, uh, let me flourish in this part uh, f- first thing was that and second thing is um, 
uh, after attending all these programs, my uh, the mentality towards others and the attitude towards others, it has changed. A, a little bit, not fully, uh, to some extent. Uh, it is going on, it's, I am exploring myself. And with the anger, uh, because I used to get uh, anger and very, very shy, yes, sharply I will be reacting. And now uh, slowly I have come down. I have uh, reduced my anger, everything, and the anxiety, everything. Okay, we will accept everything and then we will move forward. Therefore, this is how uh, my mind frame, it has been changed, but still more I have to go through. And uh, for this morning sessions, I thought um, uh, I will not be able to do because uh, I'm traveling too much. Uh, we can't start it. I used to get up by 4 o'clock, but uh, 5.30 to 6.30, it is was a very crucial period. And mm -hmm. when uh, Sunil Bhaiya and uh, Deepesh Bhaiya, when they came to our campus in the physical mode, attending UHP in a physical mode, it is literally good uh, when compared to on an online fashion, because face-to-face -face interactions were there and uh, uh, everything was going on fine. Therefore, after that particular in-house FDP that we conducted in SRM IST, uh, but still more better way than uh, everyone were telling at the end of the closing ceremony when I was uh, speaking to Sunil Bhaiya and Deepesh Bhaiya, they were telling, yeah, uh, you should have a mind thought uh, that uh, you should be able to come out and uh, join all these programs in the mornings. So I thought, okay, why can't we try uh, mm -hmm. a little bit, try our level best in spite of the busy schedule that everyone has it. But the dedication of this particular team when I work, when I work with them and when I see you, I get impressed a lot because uh, such a dedication, this particular team and uh, uh, has started on the uh, re reflections and uh, the values of the human values, uh, especially with the harmony in the society, nature and family. So understanding, right? Understanding is the very first uh, module. And uh, with that module, I am working my own self and uh, to first uh, understand me in a better way. And then let me go with the other one step by step modules. This is what uh, my reflection that I have felt so far after attending UHV2. Very Thanks. nice. Yeah, very nice. Uh, uh, I think, you know, um, Infanta Mary G. Yeah. Um, uh, I think um, many of us, you know, when we say we don't have time, yes. or how, how is it possible? We will not be able to. Somewhere that willingness has not come in, in us. A okay. lot of times you will notice that um, once we are ready and willing, we will make time. Yeah. Because if it is important to us, we yes. make time. Yes. The same 24 hours are available to everybody. And how we utilize those 24 hours, it's entirely up to us. So whatever we think important is what we are spending time in most of the time. And when we decide that something is more important, then we give it more time than something else. And that's how it goes. At least this is how I see it. And uh, you may be able to see that because many people say like this, that we would not have been able to. But then when they start attending and they see that it is making a difference, then it becomes very important to continue. And so you adjust. So people do things night before or people get up and do things earlier and then attend or whatever. We, you know, adjust our routines, our schedules based on what is significant for us. So you will notice that um, that is very true for many people. We can see that. Also, I just wanted to mention one uh, just uh, term that we use, excellence. When we say excellence, we are referring to understanding the harmony at all the four levels of our living. 
and living in that harmony. So that term that we are using as excellence is specific for that. Now, normally when we are referring to excellence, usually, you know, uh, in our day-to-day -day life, we may be referring to some um, excelling in some skill, a particular skill. Say somebody is a maths teacher who is excelling in teaching in maths. Another person is a cricketer who excels in uh, playing cricket and so on. So we all have our skills, which is part of the competence, part of our behavior. And you can see now that that is one uh, small area in this entire existence. But here, when we are referring to excellence, we are referring to understanding at all the four levels and living with that. That means somebody who has excellence will be in continuous happiness and will, you know, be able to live with that and also uh, be complementary to others. So I just wanted to, uh, because all these terms, uh, we'll come up with these terms again and again. And when we recap some of the things also, in fact, we'll be doing some of the recap uh, before we get into the exercises. And so I uh, just wanted to clarify that for everybody, part of our behavior. And you can see now that that is one uh, small area in this entire existence. But here, when we are referring to excellence, we are referring to understanding at all the four levels and living with that. That means somebody who has excellence will be in continuous happiness and will, you know, be able to live with that and also uh, be complementary to others. So I just wanted to, uh, because all these terms, uh, we'll come up with these terms again and again. And when we recap some of the things also, in fact, we'll be doing some of the recap uh, before we get into the exercises. And so I uh, just wanted to clarify that for everybody. But uh, really nice sharing um, in Panta Mary Ji. And uh, I'm glad that you're part of the session and uh, that you, uh, you decided to continue and do this. Um, so I could see that the thing I want to share is what efforts I have made for mm -hmm. self-exploration on that regular mm -hmm. basis. Yes. So um, after learning from the introductory session and the refresher course, I uh, used to take the points on daily basis. Like uh, before starting the day, I used to plan what I'm uh, supposed to observe today on every conversation, which can be official or uh, family with family. And, uh, I used to uh, like, for example, focus on preconditioning and uh, intentions. Then um, uh, I started like without assuming whatever I learned is yes, that is true or false. I wanted to explore with myself. So with constant remembrance, I used to start the day. And then I realized that it was somewhere on and off. Somewhere I used to pull intentionally when I re remember, yes, now I, I am doing precondition or uh, taking doubt on the intention. So then uh, I, I used to uh, remember that and accordingly change the or update the conversation. But this was uh, again not accepted pulling intentionally. So I wanted it to be naturally within me. Then slowly I observed that when my colleagues or friends, they used to come to me uh, to share their discomfort or uh, you know, with their family or official way. So I observed as being third person, yes, I was able to discuss in a more better manner. So I felt why I am not able to do it within me. Why when I'm looking as a third person, yes, I was able to do it very nicely. 
Hmm. So I felt it so deep that I started realizing that means by end of the day, a kind of self-assessment used to do like what happened today or in the past and how could I have taken efforts that could have made the situation or something different. And I okay. really uh, confessed. So due to this somewhere, there was an happiness earlier in uh, within family or an official or with the students. So then on regular basis, I used to set this, that I have to work on these things. And uh, I also remember that the Umesh Sarji and they used to tell, note it down, journaling. So earlier I used to wonder what to note down. Then on the mood swing, yes, today I have done this accordingly. So I'm feeling happy, I'm feeling light. And then slowly I was able to put it into words. So gradually I am able to see that naturally it's a happening. Uh, not to doubt on the intention of others or making precondition. And simultaneously I used to be prepared for that. Like I understand when the goal is clear, there is clarity. Uh, we can on regularize or behave with the right understanding and there will be uh, like chances would be reduced for, of the intention or making wrong. So while taking efforts, I used to always turn to the point right understanding. This why I, okay, right understanding if I have, then yes, the things are automatically unfolding, it happens and get the solutions. And talking about outcome or achievements, yes, I uh, was uh, able to make a bonding with students, I mean, long lasting bonding. And yes. the biggest uh, like uh, thing is, yes, harmony in the uh, family. Like, uh, and I used to feel more lightness, like halka feel in the mind. And uh, when I, when you have a right understanding, become fearless means uh, to accept the things the truth of life and uh, started improvement in my health and made more creative things and I also observed that yes these things which UHV is teaching all we learned from our parents but there was um, Heady thing. I created my uh, UHP one through online and then two uh, through face to face the program. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, before attending uh, UHP, I used to do things or um, uh, day to my day to day activities uh, to express uh, to impress others and out of which I used to gain happiness. And uh, I used to expect uh, recognition or uh, appreciation. Uh, from my uh, superiors in office um, for my sincere uh, effort or work. But after at, uh, understanding the exact meaning of happiness through this UHV program, I can able to see uh, some percentage of shift within me. Uh, and also uh, that is still I am working on it to achieve more transformation within me. And the next one is, uh, nowadays, I am uh, maintaining calmness within me and observe things very patiently and react on uh, the basis of uh, right understanding uh, and uh, right relationship uh, concepts. I am experiencing, uh, nowadays I am experiencing more energy within me and uh, do things very constructively uh, in my office as well as in my uh, home. So that is another achievement. Um, and third mm -hmm. one is, uh, I have got uh, approval from my college management for organizing self-funded UHV, uh, introductory UHV, FDP in our campus and uh, the application process in, in, in SN pipeline. And uh, actually out of 350 faculty members in our campus, uh, only 60 have successfully completed. And uh, by hosting this UHV uh, FDP in our campus, I can uh, believe more number of my colleagues may get benefited out of this. 
uh, this is the objective of this program uh, these are all my achievements and regarding the key takeaways uh, out of this uhv uh, first one i i can uh, I, I just clearly understand the difference between self and body and understand the meaning of happiness and trying to be happy uh, always uh, or otherwise within me in continuity and uh, i can uh, feel that uh, there is an uh, improvement in my competence level and still more uh, transformation is needed and i am also working on that and the next thing i understand that uh, we are responsible for our own happiness so this is the uh, another takeaway uh, from this program and also i try to avoid accumulating things or uh, physical uh, facilities uh, more than required and also uh, avoid preconditioning and one more thing key, key takeaway is i accept others are similar to me okay so these are all the some of the take, uh, key takeaways from uh, um, this uhv program and uh, my sincere thanks to act and uh, nccip team uh, for providing such a wonderful uh, opportunity for me thank you thank you didi thank you all thank you mathili ji um you are able to see many shifts many changes in yourself plus you are able to bring it to your institution yes and you find that once you once it comes into the institution and the whole institution you know goes yeah. through the course the entire environment of the institution changes yes uh, there are some examples of some institutions like that there is akgec um and uh, this is near delhi and akgec has um sort of imbibed this in the entire institution so once all the faculty go through it all the staff go through it then the entire college environment the whole um sort of atmosphere in the environment uh changes for the better and so that shift can be noticed when people visit that college so i think uh, you will find that very very useful so yes, best wish every this is the need of the day thank to you okay ma'am uh, ma'am i have uh, neither done uhv1 neither nor the uhv2 but okay. i uh, i have my experience uh, what uh, has happened is uh, this is the first session that i am attending and ever since i have started listening to this session i am uh, constantly looking at my thoughts all the time and uh, i am able to respond uh, not reacting to situation i am able to respond so what happened i came to know that uh, sombai is taking session at the agra stadium and i came to know uh, about these sessions only recently only recently i didn't know about it so uh, my name was not in the list of the teachers to be sent actually uh, some five or six teachers were going for that session but i was so much interested my friend uh, when told me i was so much interested that i took leave and attended session on thursday and friday okay uh, some of the teachers in the duty pardon what session did you attend at tyagra stadium in delhi uh, sombai is taking session these days okay. for five days this for five days mm -hmm. uh, but uh, my name was not there in the list so i was not sent uh, mm -hmm. but when my friend told me about this session that uh, so, so i got interested and i took leave and attended session for two days thursday and friday okay so um, the uh, there some of the staff members spotted me there and uh, they said why you are here and uh, the mentor sir of my school spotted me there and yesterday i got a message in my uh, could uh, you be very brief about this because we are almost uh, 
you're ready to go on to the next part okay i uh, actually i would summarize it um i got the message that uh, only the teachers whose names are there in the list only those can attend the session yeah uh, he was not happy uh, with me my mentor sir he was not happy with me during uh, what happened was that uh, during last year i took so many leaves and i ignored his instructions um, so he was um, i think he was offended and he said uh, he sent a message that only those uh, teachers can attend this session you mentioned that could you go further because we had uh, uh, if you would like to go okay, further okay. now yeah i i just want to tell ki uh, he i was uh, uh, told that you cannot attend this session although i was very much interested otherwise i would have got angry and i would have sent some um, hurtful message but i was able to see that he was only uh, that aap kehte hai na ki jo aap karte hain wo aap paate hain to jo maine kiya pichle पूरे साल में कि छुट्टियां ली और उनके इंस्ट्रक्शंस को फॉलो नहीं किया तो उसको उसकी लाइट में मैं देख पा रही थी और मैं गुस्सा नहीं हुई आई डिड नॉट गेट एंग्री बस दैट्स ऑल आई वांट टू से दैट आई वाज नॉट जजमेंटल एंड आई आई विल व्हाट आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू डू इज सिंस नाउ यू नो विल बी गेटिंग डीपर इनटू द कंटेंट अम फॉर योर बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड फॉर इट टू बी मोस्ट यूजफुल फॉर यू i would suggest that you join up there are ongoing um five day online workshops in english and in hindi every week so whichever language is you are more comfortable in i would uh, request you to sign up for you know register for this um it's free anybody can register okay it's a five day you... online workshop you can get the details there uh, sunil ji tar prasanna ji they are putting the details in the chat also okay um, you can uh, get to know more about it and i would strongly recommend that you register for an online workshop okay. universal human values workshop they are there constantly every week there is a workshop running with okay. that you will be able to catch up with the content yes. and try and attend all the sessions because it's like one sentence being spoken over five days so uh, try to attend the whole thing Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All the very best to you. Thank you. So now we are coming to lecture three, where we will recap some of the things we learnt about, or some things that we may have observed about our own basic aspiration and how we fulfil it. We learnt some things. We heard some things. We got the information about some things in UHB two. we will try to uh relook at some of these and then go a step further and see how if and how it is making a difference for us so like we mentioned earlier we request that you do the foundation course the uhv2 course prior to coming for this for your own better understanding for it to be most useful for yourself um but since some of you have not attended and uh, many of you may have attended some time in the past and may not recall some of the basic content the basic um, concepts that we were talking about in uhv2 we are just going to go through a little quickly and then go on with the content of this course so we were able to see in the uhv2 that the basic human aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity today i mean for those of us who do not recall this or did not attend uhv2 we may think that we all have very different desires somebody has some desire i have a different desire you have a different desire but if we look why we desire something if we ask that keep asking that question why so say i want to have a big house 
that is my desire to build a big house now if i ask myself why do i want to build a big house perhaps you know different people may get different answers somebody may say i have more people and we live in a small place so i need a bigger place so i need a bigger house another person may say no no in at my level everybody that is at my level in the office they have a big house so i also need to have a big house another person may say that um in the colony that i am all the people have big houses so my house looks very small compared to theirs so i need a bigger house my neighbor has such a big house i have a smaller house and i'm thinking i should have a bigger house so like that we'll find many people have many different reasons for desiring something but if you keep asking that question why so if your neighbor has something why do you also want perhaps you say that people will respect me more or i can i notice that he is being respected and perhaps i am not being respected because of the house or whatever may be the reason so if you get deeper and deeper into why for every desire you have ultimately you will come to that root desire that because you want to be happy even if you say i want respect well, why do you want respect because ultimately i want to be happy i want to be prosperous so this is why we call it the basic aspiration so in fact if you look at different desires they seem very very different but if you look at deep down if you go to the root we are all searching for that happiness and prosperity this is what we want and we want it all the time even one moment we are unhappy we are you know, we don't like it so how do we fulfill this basic human aspiration so this can be fulfilled by living in human consciousness by ensuring right understanding right feeling and physical facility if we can go to perhaps the next few slides will have the diagram that will be able to show it better this point yeah nice so three things are required is what we said in uhv2 we need right understanding we need relationship with other human beings and we need physical facility all these three are required for us when we don't see this a lot of times our focus may have shifted largely towards physical facility while the other two may be kind of left out or we may not be paying attention to that so when our focus is largely on physical facility and you can see in this circle the smaller circle inside if we keep accumulating more and more or trying to get more and more and more more wealth more money more you know gadgets more what we are referring to as physical facility more of these things but we are missing on the understanding and the relationship part just think about it you have all the wealth you are in the most uh, beautiful scenic place but you are disturbed because your relationship with your spouse is not good or you are feeling lonely and you don't have any friends how do you feel you can answer in the chat Ranjan ji has a question. We'll just take it in a moment. So this you can answer in the chat. That you know you are in a wonderful location. You have all the wealth, but nobody to share your loneliness with. 
so we can see many of the answers it's seems almost obvious right you will be unhappy you're dissatisfied miserable all these answers we are getting true so why is that because relationship is also important to us and this relationship with other human beings when we don't understand it then all the problems happen many a time you'll hear people say you know i try my level best but my wife doesn't seem to understand me well, the wife will probably say the same thing about the husband happens right or about friends or about close ones siblings so where is the problem we do want to be in relationship that is very clear isn't it we would like to be in a state where we have good relationships with others it is another thing that sometimes the relationship is not good therefore we avoid the relationship and prefer to be by ourselves but if you look within are you really happy with that or would you rather be able to have good relationships and not have to seclude yourself so you'll find that you know we do want relationship it is important for us but we are not able to fulfill the relationship properly if we don't understand the relationship properly so for the relationship to work for the relationship to be fulfilling for both sides one requires some understanding about relationship and that's where right understanding comes in so when we don't have the right understanding when we don't understand relationships we are not able to have good relationships fulfilling relationships so we become unhappy and when we are unhappy of course we when we share this with others we make them unhappy also i can only give what i have so if i am unhappy i share unhappiness if i am happy i share happiness with the other and when we don't have the right understanding about physical facility also we don't know how much we need because it may seem like our needs are endless we need more and more and more so many times it happens you think that the salary is less so when the salary increases i'll be happy it will be good we'll have whatever we need but when the salary increases we find our needs have also increased or they seem to have increased and so again we are in the same boat and we are again trying to get more and more and more and this becomes like a vicious cycle so we get caught up in this loop of trying to get more and more and more without realizing that the problem is may not be here the problem may be that we need to look at it in the right light with the right understanding so what we talked of was that we need right understanding relationship and physical facility all three are required all three are important neither one of these three can be left out yes is that okay i mean you can answer in the chat are you okay with that that all three are important neither can be left out yes okay so if all three are required what is the priority we said the priority is right understanding first priority relationship as second priority and physical facility as third priority why because if we don't have the right understanding we don't understand relationships we are unhappy in our relationships unfulfilled and if we don't have understanding about physical facility we don't know how much we need so for all of this to work for us 
when we have these three things, when we work on these three things in the right priority, we are referring to that as human consciousness. And when you are largely focused on physical facility, that is being referred to as animal consciousness or inhuman consciousness. So that shift needs to happen. So now we can go back to that previous slide. Yeah. So this is what we were saying. The basic human aspiration for happiness and prosperity in continuity is fulfilled by living in human consciousness by ensuring right understanding. Right, right understanding is where it is in the self. Right feeling in relationships, understanding the relationships, having the right feeling in relationships. That right feeling is where that is also in myself and physical facility. So all these three are required in this priority is what we said. I wanted to have a one question from the next slide, please. Next slide. Huh, yeah, uh, we are going to touch about the human consciousness in the changing in this particular era of sophistication and the uh, technology revolution. How we can inculcate this to our students? Human consciousness, mana chetna. So this is what we, the whole thing is what we are talking about, bringing it in education. Um, this is, in fact, in this slide itself, you can see it's talking about the role of education to make this transformation happen. So just as, you know, it will, we can see some shift in ourselves when we undergo these um, workshops and so on you find some shift. It may not be a huge shift or it may be, it may be lasting, it may not be lasting, but you will see some shift in your thinking, in your, you know, in the way, in your behavior perhaps. And this has been brought about how, so we give some proposals in the workshop, then you explore it within yourself. And then you try to live according. So this brings about slowly that transformation to what we are calling human consciousness. So the process is slow, but one has to go through. First and foremost, we have to try to work on it on ourselves. Because yes, if I understand properly, then I can help others. Isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Self, if my understanding is not there, then I won't be help, able to help others. So we work on ourselves. We improve our competence. We understand better. We improve our competence. And then we try to help others. So in education right now, we are having all these workshops. We are having them simultaneously for the faculty. We are also having for students and so on. And the students... You'll, what we have been able to see is that the students are responding very well, in fact. They do find it meaningful. You see, this natural acceptance is there in each one of us. It's there in the students also. So when they refer to it, they are able to see the significance in their life. But they need to be able to hear the proposal, to be able to verify it within themselves, and then try to live it. So if that exploration happens, you will notice that that change, that transformation will also start happening. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we also have, we'll take one more question. Rajesh Sharma ji. Good morning, Rajesh Sharma ji. Um, Good morning, madam. Am I audible? Now you are audible. 
Um, uh, I have just one question. In mm -hmm. acquiring the physical facility, uh, can you just uh, elaborate on different needs and want, madam? Yes, that's an important question. <laughs> So if I understand the role of physical facility, I will understand that physical facility is required for the body. Yes, ma'am. It is needed for the body. As long as the body is there, you know, food is required, some clothes are required, some shelter is required for the body, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. But, it, you know, when I understand that these, this is the needs of the body and physical facility is useful or it is required for the body, then I can also see that it is required in some limited quantity. Right? Yes, madam. When it comes to food also, you can see if I might eat two chapatis, you might eat four chapatis, somebody else might cheat eat six or eight chapatis or idlis or dosas or whatever but nobody can keep eating so you need limited amount so you can plan so every month i need this much quantity of food and i need a few clothes to protect the body i need a shelter right protect the body so this can be we can see that it is required in limited quantity and we can identify, right, how much is needed. So this is about the need. But when we go to want, see, we, a lot of times what happens is we start looking for more things that we want. And in fact, if we try to ask ourselves why we want, we may find that many a time what is happening is that I have a need for happiness in myself and I'm confused about how to be happy within myself. A lot of times I may have assumed that I am the body or I may assume like just now we were talking about I want to have a bigger house. So I already have a two or three bedroom house, but I want to have another floor or I want to expand the house. Now, if I have, you know, in the family, if we are two, three people, do I need it or do I want it? Can you see the difference? Are you able to hear me? Rajesh and Mali? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yes, ma so, are you able to see this difference between needing and wanting? So, the need is, you know, what is really required for the body. But a lot of times I say, I want this, I want that, I want that. And if I ask myself why I want it, I may think that this will make me happy. But if I go to understand myself, I will find that my happiness is not linked to physical facility at all. My happiness comes from having the right understanding and the right feeling within myself. It has nothing to do with physical facility. Physical facility is going to be useful for the body. You know, children understand this very well. Not understand, I would say, you know, they are able to um, go by their natural acceptance very easily. They have less preconditionings than we do. Isn't it? For a child who is playing in the mud, now somebody comes to visit. The child may not feel awkward or embarrassed that they are wearing some dirty clothes or torn clothes or something. But we as parents, we become very conscious and we get disturbed. We might get angry. We might pick up the child and clean them up and dress them in proper clothes and then bring them out. Possible? Yeah. Rajeshji? 
I'm not able to hear you somehow. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not saying that one has to do without physical fertility, but to be able to identify how much is required, that is our need. But to be trying to, um, you know, having this thing that I want more, I want more. We have to try to see why do we want it. And many a time we will notice that actually what we want is happiness in the self. And we are trying to get it through something outside, physical facility, which can't really help. A small child, you know, wants to be with the mother, wants to spend time with the mother, with the father, playing with them. But when we don't have time for that, we bring home a toy. Isn't it? And we get the child used to being with the toy. So now we are conditioning the child <laughs> that every time we come home from the office, the child wants some chocolate or some toy. Now the child wants it. Now this conditioning who created, we created in the child. But the child was very happy just to be with us, play with us. Didn't really need a toy every day or a chocolate every day. Can you see the difference? I think we lost uh, Rajesh Ji somewhere. So anyway, we'll go further. We can go back to that slide that we were working on. Yeah. So what we were mentioning was that this transformation from animal consciousness or inhuman consciousness, if you want to call it, transformation from here to human consciousness can be brought about by human education, transforming the sanskars through education. And this is what the whole process is. This is what um, is you know, being practiced now with the UHV team actively. You can see this. Uh, through the AICTE, so many students have gone through it, through this education. And slowly, as this happens, as uh, this shift happens in individual transformation from inhuman consciousness to human consciousness, then this leads to, this is the basis, this is the foundation for ensuring the justice, order, peace in the society, isn't it? First, we bring about a transformation within ourselves. And then we work on uh, bringing it through education to others. And with that as basis, we are able to do justice to our relationships. We are able to see in the order in existence and we are able to live in that. And ultimately this can lead to a point where this shift in transformation in the consciousness can lead to a tipping point in society where society also gets transformed. Eventually leading to an undivided society and universal human order. So this may seem like very big words. But that possibility can start only when we work on ourselves first. So we start from ourselves and then proceed further. So this is what uh, I'll stop here. We are almost out of time. We'll reflect on this. I'll also um, put a um, assignment or a point for self-reflection in the group. But we'll reflect on these three. Uh, things, you know, that are important for our continuity of happiness for today.